Hey guys, welcome to the new statistician YouTube channel. Today we have a very interesting and very kind of difficult topic for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the beta distribution. Oh, statistical distributions. Oh my god. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to hopefully present sort of the math aspect and really quickly talk about sort of where it's useful and what it's useful for, of course. We're always trying to get you guys familiar with the application part of things on this channel. So let's get right into it. So first question right off the bat, what exactly is the beta distribution? It's basically another candidate distribution for modeling continuous variables. Basically any number that can be, you know, any 2.5 to 2.99999, whatever, you know, continuous data essentially is what it's for. Specifically, it's used whenever you want to find a better fit for your data than say something that's super commonly used in statistics and all of data science really. It's the normal distribution. It's sort of beat the normal distribution and as you guys all know, it's really beaten around the bush for just about every application. And the beta distribution is an alternative to that because it may, uh, may be that it fits our data better. And so really the main use, and this is sort of where it gets interesting, is it's been used widely to model data where the continuous variable is in between zero and one. We call that fractional data. So really that the name should kind of make some sense when you take a look at it, fractional data. It's really fractions, right? Numbers between zero and one. So fractional data should kind of make sense, numbers between zero and one. And so now for the mathy formula part, which we kind of have to talk about if we're going to do data science, machine learning, etc., 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 you have to do the mathy formula part. So really quick, we're going to, since we're focused on the applied aspect, we're going to basically give you guys the statistical distribution right off the bat. So the formula basically looks like this. Let's quickly go over it. The range of real value inputs, that's this Y variable here that you guys see is in between zero is takes values between zero and one parameters for that distribution all statistical distributions have parameters you have alpha and you have beta so here they are this alpha this beta here and then you have this weird gamma symbol here and this gamma symbol here actually is a function itself it's called the gamma function and it's actually defined by this uh, integral right here, but it turns out it actually approximates to this here. So if you can think of Z as the input to that function, then really the overall way to just evaluate that function at that value Z is just put in Z here, minus one to the factorial. And basically this would imply, since it's a factorial of a positive number, that Z is basically any positive whole number that's greater than zero. And really quick, since we're on distributions, we have to also sort of consider what exactly is the center value of that distribution it's mean and how much variability it has. So let's just get right to it. It turns out the expected value for the beta distribution is really just it's two parameters, you know, factored together in some complex way, which is basically just alpha divided by alpha plus beta. The variance, similarly, just there's two parameters computed together in a, a formula, like so, like this. The mean and variance, obviously, like we mentioned, depend only on alpha and beta. That's kind of the important point here to take away. The mean and variance of the distribution really depends on the parameters that you either specify or that are computed for using whatever estimation method you guys decide to use. So what does it actually look like? And this is kind of where we get to the little fun part. Um, thanks Wikipedia for providing a link and a nice graphic for this distribution that I'm about to show you guys. And as you guys can see, it's very versatile. Um, why, it's one reason why it's actually a really good alternative to just throwing all your data inside the NIT normal distribution for processing. So the beta distribution is a great alternative to a normal distribution, partly because of its versatility. So as you guys can see, the shapes of the, the shape of the distribution depend really only on the alpha and beta you specify or the ones that are estimated from your data. So if your data looks like a variety of different things, the chances are the beta distribution 
can pretty much approximate it very well by just by tweaking whatever alpha and whatever beta you have. So let's take a really cool uh, example. I know in a lot of my videos, I love to do examples. If you guys saw the other previous two videos that we put out. So let's get right to it. This is a baseball data set. So here it is. All we have is sort of the percentage of hits that some batters in our baseball data set made. You guys can check out the data from a link below and you can also find this data on our website. And so here's some basic stats on it. So you can kind of tell right off the bat it approximates the normal distribution fairly well. And here in the actual output from our software that we have, you can see it approximates the normal distribution very well. And the beta distribution, you can kind of see it here, it's approximating it, these two parameters here. And so this is sort of one way to use the beta distribution, just model your data as good as you can. In this case, it looks like our data is pretty normal, which is really a good thing. It makes all of our lives easier. Quick note on this theta and sigma. Theta and sigma are actually two ways to define the beta distribution's range of inputs. So, for example, we mentioned earlier that the beta distribution is good for our data between 0 and 1. Our software in this case allows us to specify what we want are the minimum and sort of the maximum of our data. So theta is actually the minimum value, so it's just that number there. And sigma is actually just the theta plus sigma. And so here's a quick recap of the beta distribution since we did go over quite a bit of stuff. And so when's the best time to use the data distribution? That's actually whenever you have fractional data. So instead of just throwing in all your data in the normal distribution just because, hey, it's continuous, it's as close, it's basically percentages, it's continuous, let's throw in the normal distribution. Well, maybe you should give it the beta distribution a try in a lot of cases, especially if it's fractional data. All best alternative, like we mentioned before, is whenever your data doesn't fit the normal distribution, using the beta distribution is actually a great way to really get, to really see if uh, you're, to really get to find a distribution that fits your data. And of course, when you want a statistical model with a little bit more flexibility. So there's only really two parameters, which we'll talk about in another video about the normal distribution that define it, which is the mean and variance that you guys probably a little bit familiar with and but the alpha and beta that we get to specify in the beta distribution has a, a lot more flexibility in terms of how we can sort of adjust those and set those values and of course how they're estimated from whatever software we're using and of course you can when you want to compare how it works to other distributions kind of like what we did before we compared how our normal distribution stacked up against the beta distribution in our baseball data set case where we had percent of hits calculated, we kind of found that our data was pretty normal for the most part. And so both distributions fit fairly well. And so that's really all we have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Um, happy mining. If you guys really like this video and like some of the content we have, we have an entire article on the beta distribution for you guys in our link down below in our website. We post every week. We also have a Patreon link down below. So if you really like some of the content that we do, please give us some love. We love some support and we really appreciate it. We're planning on having some great content out there for you guys that are exclusive to our donors. So thanks again. Happy mining.